Welcome to the channel and we're going to start our Apex Fizz and Clo, uh, my new workflow guys. So once you have created your garment for uh, getting your knit pattern made in Shimaseki, this is just another alternative workflow to getting accurate full fashion uh, garments looking uh, like precise with more intricate details that sometimes you need to design a piece that is a full fashion piece or a seamless piece or even just a regular sweater. So here I'm just working on an athletic piece and I'm just uh, making sure number one that my UV map is all set up. Please do not forget this is rule number one. Set up your UV map. Okay, so once we are setting up our pattern, we're making sure everything is straight. When it comes to knit, there are a lot of straight lines. I have a few too many curves in here, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, export. These are the export settings. I'll just leave those on the side for you guys to see the export settings. As I just go through and try to perfect and make sure that this pattern is, you know, aligned properly and that the, you know, everything is even because we are working with pieces that are pretty much need to be symmetrical left to right, but they are continuous pieces. So once we have everything set up with our straight lines and trying to make sure that when we put the knit pattern into Shimaseki that we have uh, more or less a block to deal with, meaning our patterns are straight, everything is measuring the same from left to right, especially for the pants. Um, you know, the rises and the leg, the leg lengths, everything should be even, uh, even Steven on left to right. I'm going to leave these up again so that you can see the settings of export. So if you want to get Apex Fizz, here is the QR code. But now we're going to open up our 3D model list and we're going to import what we just exported. And when you import, there is a section um, that you will have to add to the toolbar for extracting patterns. And this window will come up and as you highlight each pattern piece, uh, it will take it from your UV, as I understand it, and import the pattern in that sense. You have to make sure that you know the actual measurements to your pattern at least one point so you can add that and that will help with the sizing of the patterns. So once you're finished with that, your uh, design pro will open up and you'll be able to start your loop simulations and your loop editing for this garment. So now the garment, um, I just have the pants opened up. And like I said, I'm able to go ahead and just drag and drop and paint the stitches on anywhere that I want to. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but as you can see, it's easy. They have it set up where you can just select uh, a design and you can actually apply it to the area that you want inside the pattern. I try to keep things linear as I too am just really learning all of the wonderful things that you can do in this software. So like I said, I'm just doing a repeat pattern here and then you can actually mirror the pattern onto the other side of the uh, pant. So, a lot of the steps that they have set up for you in Shimaseki is to make things quick and easy. And if you know anything about um, making grid patterns in uh, a, a knit software, you can see that there is a grid section on the side of each knit that you can kind of go ahead and uh, you know learn and copy and paste and do all kinds of stuff. So I'm just going to do a few different patterns and then we're going to go ahead and start to export the export process. Once I'm satisfied and I've seen everything in the 3D mapping editor, which is the next step. So I'm just going to go ahead and mirror these stitches and then we are going to uh, see what we can make with this outfit. Now because I have a very high gauge, I'm just adding a few little details uh, that you would see in a seamless garment, a seamless knit garment. And this is kind of, like I said, knit very straight. Uh, I probably should have straightened out the crotch and uh, the, um, the back front and back rise for a little bit better uh, mapping. But now let's go into the mapping editor. One of the things that I will point out is that you are actually adding a stitch detail to every part of the pattern. So you can see that I'm working here with just the crotch. Uh, panel of the pattern and I'm actually adding a knit feature to that as well so a little bit of a different knit than the pant and usually you see that in um, 
you know in uh, real life so this is something that you can look for as far as realism now I'm going to go ahead and add colorways I do uh, make it a habit to add a gray colorway and a white colorway just so that I can have something uh, to map and contrast and maybe pull out some other different maps that uh, can be used to create a better realism in the simulation. So right now you got your Pantone colors all set up for you and you can go ahead and just pick it. So I'm just con making a contrast with the tubular trim and with the actual trim and this will also live in the 3D um, software of Shimaseki as well as being able to export it and put it into the Clo 3D software which we're going to see next. So one of the things that we do here is to look at what the actual stitches look like in real life. So this is one of the, the benefits of Shimaseki is the 3D uh, mapping editor kind of shows you exactly what you um, what you're gonna get in 3D in real time. So it usually shows the pieces, but it also does show it on the avatar. So let's take a look at that. You can go ahead and pick your uh, threads as well. So there's a thread library that you could add to for yourself. You can go to the yarn bank and you can download threads. If you wanna go to the yarn bank, here is where you can get that information. But this is what it looks like. So this is now what the rib that I added in the previous uh, few minutes ago. This is what it looks like in real time. So now we're gonna look at the, the actual pant pattern and see what those stitches look like in real time or in 3D. And it's a wonderful way to streamline your design. And like I said, I kept it pretty simple because there are a lot of steps to remember and I wanted to bring this to you in a simple simple way so two different stitches on the pants i've got my ribs at the top and bottom and when you look in the 3d editor you're going to be able to see all of this realism as well on the avatar on the garment so it's going to allow you to render that and you can see what everything looks like and then we'll export the maps and the maps will be able to uh, be imported into Clo 3D and then we'll add the normal maps that give it the texture uh, and the realism that you see here. So now I'm just going to work on the top and the top I'm just using the jacquard uh, stitches here because this top is actually in a finer gauge so I just wanted to make sure that I use the jacquard and not really a, uh, a knit gauge so that you can see the differences that you have in the stitch variations of Shimaseki. So they give you a lot of pre-made stitches, but also they have something called the data mall, which you can see here. The data mall is some place that you can actually uh, download different stitches and you can actually see a few more creative ideas from people that uh, use the software and they contribute to the data mall. So here's the QR code for the data mall. So once we've done everything in our 3D, again, we select our yarns, which is just a step that we always do in Shimaseki. Uh, whenever you have your design ready, you're able to select the yarns, you're able to copy and paste from different uh, projects to get the yarns that you want to make sure everything is uh, harmonious and uh, in sync, aligned, whatever you wanna call it. And right now I'm just going through and I'm going to add a more decorative stitch to the front and then we're going to talk about our uh, options here. So like I said, there is a way to make sure that everything is the same. So even in the colorway menu, I can go ahead and just align all of the colors to be uh, uniform across all of the different colorways. I can select colors with the pen or I mean with the picker or with the Pantone number. There are a lot of different options to remember uh, when you're using Shimaseki, but once you get it, I mean, it's so simple and intuitive. So that's one of the reasons why I like to use a Shimaseki. So now that my, all my colors are aligned, I can also go ahead and just copy and paste all of my yarns to be the same. So what I'm just doing here is I'm making sure that all the yarns are the same across all of the different colorways. So um, now I get to preview the different colorways, but also just what the knit patterns look like in the 3D window. It's actually uh, very, very detailed. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit so that you can see before we go ahead and export these maps. You just basically can see um, I'm exporting in the PNG format and the GLTF, which is going to give me all of the maps that I need. And just taking a look, I make sure my normal map is there. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, export a second colorway just so that I can make sure that I have some options here. But after we have everything exported, we're now ready to go ahead and lay our maps on our patterns as a graphic. Now, one of the things that you have to be sure of is to make sure that the scale is correct. So here I'm just using uh, the high resolution image that ex exports as a graphic placement. There is a uh, seam allowance created. So you're able to actually place the pattern precisely, even if you have to size it up or size it down, you can see exactly where the edges are. If you zoom in, you'll be able to see exactly where the edges are. And there's a little bit of seam allowance that it kind of creates a guide for you as to where your pattern should end up. So it is pretty intuitive, like I said. You might have to do some scaling. This is where measuring your pattern in the beginning comes in, just to make sure that you're scaling uh, properly. And make sure you move your pieces around so that you're not getting any overlaps in your um, graphic placements. Because sometimes the graphic placements will place onto a pattern that is adjacent. So just make sure that everything is kind of spread out like you see me doing here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and size it to exactly what I want to have for this pattern piece. And it's as simple as that. And as you can see, these stitches are very realistic. And remember that your, your graphic maps, that is where you actually add your normal map to. So you're not adding the normal map to the fabric, you're adding the normal map to the actual graphic placement so that you can get that full three-dimensional look when you're rendering. So this is how it all looks once it comes together. And it is pretty darn spiffy. <laughs> I don't know how else to tell you guys that I love this. I love this and I'm gonna be doing it more and more so you'll see more intricate details and more intricate uh, types of yarns. But I wanted to bring you the workflow to show you that it is possible. So once you have everything laid out properly, then you're able to go in just as usual and uh, it will function the same way that it does in your animations. It will function perfectly with everything else that you have going on in Clo. But you have that full fashion edge, you have that tubular, you have that rib quality, you have all of the different details that you can go ahead and uh, to make your garments look real. So this is my thing, you know, textures are my thing, guys, so I love it. So I wanted to bring this to you so that you see. With all the options in Clo, this is something that integrates seamlessly into the workflow, so I wanted to show you that. You do have to have Shimiseki, so if you go to the beginning, you'll be able to go to uh, get Apex Fizz, and you can start your Shimiseki journey using Apex Fizz for your 3D. I'll just paste it again here for you guys to go ahead and start your Apex Fizz journey. And it is something, like I said, once you learn it, it is very intuitive and easy to follow. Uh, just like any other software, uh, using 3D to make realistic garments. You do have a bit to learn, but they are fully supportive and they've supported me through this journey where I've been able to learn this much and I'm quite happy. So I just wanna make sure that you guys have the same opportunities. And the workflow is just the beginning. There will be more tutorials on the process, However, it is fully integratable with Clo 3 d and this is something that is very particular for this type of garment. So I'm putting in my animation, same as always, and doing my renders, same as always, but the amount of realism is impeccable. Guys, I am also using, as you can see from the thumbnail, and also from the, in the photos at the end, these look great with enhanced AI uh, technology, looking realistic on a real person. So you're gonna see this little animation on my Instagram and you're gonna see the uh, realistic renders that I use AI for and it just brings your projects to an elevated level and everybody wants that. So uh, guys, enjoy the process, start your journey, ask me questions. I'm here for you to help you through uh, the 3D journey and to be your best and make your projects awesome. So thank you for watching and we will just wrap up with some images and uh, again, follow those QR codes. You're gonna see that there's so much more uh, to the eye 
It's great to see what Shimaseki is now uh, offering Kolo users to be able to uh, integrate the third-party software with the amazing Shimaseki uh, patterns and 3D capabilities. So you guys enjoy, thank you for watching and make sure to like and subscribe on the channel and now for those fabulous AI images. Bye-bye.